What happens when these giant predators clash? Are sperm whales the killer of killer whales? Or do orcas still have the upper hand? Sperm whales are the largest toothed predators on Earth that rule the kingdom of the blackest depths. So we know very little about how they actually hunt, which has made them into almost mythological creatures. What we do know is that they use echolocation to navigate and hunt in depths of up to 3,000 feet. We have seen large, sucker-shaped scars on their skin, so we know that they prey on the formidable giant squid, which can reach lengths of over 40 feet. We have also found remains of large sharks in their stomachs, which proves that they are truly the apex predators of the deep ocean. Killer whales, or orcas, are also formidable hunters of the ocean. Different orca pods have different diets, but some populations are known for coordinating their pods to hunt blue whales. The name killer whale has changed over time from whale killers because they are known for preying on a wide variety of whales. Though they have been observed killing enormous whales like this massive 70-foot blue whale, They usually target smaller calves and mostly hunt filter-feeding whales that are not considered predators. To answer these questions, let's talk about how these two compare. A typical killer whale can weigh up to 10,000 pounds and measure about 23 feet in length. Males are larger than females, with the largest recorded orca reaching 32 feet and weighing around 22,000 pounds. But this size is nothing compared to sperm whales. Female sperm whales average about 40 feet and weigh up to 90,000 pounds, which makes them nine times heavier than average orcas. But a bull sperm whale is truly massive. They can reach a length of 60 feet and weigh as much as 120,000 pounds. That's six times heavier and nearly three times longer than the largest killer whales. Though size-wise sperm whales are formidable, their size doesn't prevent orcas from attacking. This rare footage shows that a large pod of orcas that were searching for food attacked a large herd of sperm whales. So obviously, size can't deter killer whales, and they still need more features and abilities to defend against orcas. Sperm whales' most impressive weapon is their massive heads, which make up about a third of their body length and are incredibly robust. The thick skull provides a physical barrier against attacks. And in confrontational situations, they use their heads to headbutt or ram into killer whales, which helps them deter smaller or younger orcas. Another fearful feature of sperm whales is their teeth. Each of these giant teeth measures about 8 inches in length and can weigh 2.2 pounds. That is why we also call sperm whales cachalot, which is a French word for tooth or big tooth. We don't have any estimation of their bite force, but they have strong jaw muscles. So, their bite force should be substantial. But they only have teeth on their lower jaw, and their upper jaw is smooth. This is because they don't usually use their teeth to attack or bite large animals. Instead of relying on biting, they use suction to capture their prey. They open their mouths rapidly to create a vacuum and then pull in squid and fish. So, they mostly use their teeth for grasping their prey, and their upper jaw's smooth surface helps them quickly swallow their prey. Killer whales can swim up to 36 miles per hour, but sperm whales can cruise at 5 miles per hour and swim in spurts at up to 23 miles per hour. So, they have no way to escape if orcas are near. So, sperm whales use their sophisticated echolocation and excellent hearing abilities to detect killer whales approaching. They are so good at it that they can create a detailed auditory image of their surroundings. And in ideal conditions, they can detect killer whales approaching from 6 to 10 miles away. This gives sperm whales enough time to form defensive formations when orcas are nearby. Researchers say that when they detect orcas, their first response is a reduction in vocal activities. They especially decrease in the production of echolocation clicks, which we know them as usual clicks and sperm whales use for foraging. This makes them less detectable to killer whales. After going silent, they start listening to killer whales. They can distinguish between different types of killer whale sounds, like those associated with feeding and those that orcas make for socializing. So, sperm whales assess the level of threat based on these sounds and react accordingly. They also have complex vocalizations and are excellent at communication. So if they detect any threat, they alert one another and organize themselves into a defensive formation quickly. In fact, in 1997, researchers observed how this communication works. They saw a pod of five killer whales that were charging a small herd of five sperm whales. 
these sperm whales were consistently sending distress signals. So, in a very short time, a pod of five sperm whales that was almost half a mile away joined them. And soon after that, another pod arrived. Gradually, many more sperm whales joined the pod, and their number grew to more than 50 whales. So, even though a female orca approached sperm whales, it couldn't do anything, and orcas left the scene. After that, the sperm whales also went their separate ways. One of the most effective defensive strategies that sperm whales have is the rosette formation. This formation is named after the daisy flower because of its appearance. Sperm whales form a circle with their heads facing inward and their tails outward. In this formation, the more vulnerable members of the pod, like calves and younger whales, are placed in the center and adults shield them. The sperm whale's tail is a formidable weapon and can deliver powerful blows to any orca that gets too close. So with their orientation, their tails are placed outward, and the pod creates a moving wall of defense to deter orcas from attempting to attack. The effectiveness of the rosette formation is not solely reliant on the physical barrier created by the whale's bodies, but also on their ability to communicate and coordinate during an attack. In the first observation of an encounter between orcas and sperm whales in the 1990s, researchers saw a pod of 35 orcas attacking a herd of nine sperm whales. By the time the researchers arrived at the scene, the whales have already formed a rosette. Orcas were attacking in waves to disrupt the formation and get one of the whales to break the formation so that they could get access to the vulnerable whales at its center. They kept biting the sperm whales and trying to injure and weaken them. Two hours into the episode, the killer whales dragged one of the sperm whales out of the rosette. It was immediately attacked by four to five killer whales biting and pulling on it as fresh blood colored the surface. Within less than a minute, one of the larger sperm whales in the rosette left the formation and swam over beside its companion. It was immediately attacked as it assumed a position parallel to the first whale. The pair moved slowly back into the rosette. On each of the several occasions when killer whales pulled a sperm whale out of the rosette, one or sometimes two others left the formation almost immediately, and despite the vicious attacks, they flanked the isolated whale and led it back into the formation. The attack took nearly four hours. Near the end of the attack, it appeared that most of the sperm whales were injured, and several of them were seriously injured. Finally, after four hours of attack, three large male orcas joined the pod and finished it. They didn't kill a calf or weak whale. They killed the biggest female in the group and dragged her away to feast on her. So, apparently, rosette formation is not enough and sperm whales need other active defensive tactics. In a very new sighting in March of 2024, 30 orcas were chasing what seemed like a small pod of sperm whales on the western coast of Australia. The whales were in rosette formation when one of the killer whales charged at them. And suddenly, sperm whales began to defecate and release so much waste that the water turned a dark reddish color because of their squid diet. Apparently, the killer whales didn't seem to like it and left them alone. Marine biologists call this the defense of defecation. However, there are not many documented cases of sperm whales doing this, so perhaps it happened by luck or it is a defense mechanism that the whales in this specific region have learned. Sperm whales produce some of the loudest sounds in the animal kingdom, and their clicks can reach up to 230 decibels, which is louder than a jet engine. Though loudness is kind of different in the water compared to air. Because water has unique physical properties for transmitting sound. A sound that is 230 decibels in water would not be perceived the same way as 230 decibels in air. The density of water makes sound waves more palpable than in air, and change in pressure can be felt on the body and eardrums. So when sperm whales make a loud click, it is felt as a vibration through the body. These sounds are so overwhelming that human divers often need hearing protection to be safe. So, when sperm whales face killer whales, they may use these loud clicks as a defensive mechanism. These intimidating clicks can disorient killer whales and disrupt their coordination, and eventually cause them to leave the sperm whales alone. Another advantage that sperm whales have is their deep dive. They can dive to depths exceeding 7,000 feet, and because killer whales can't dive deeper than 850 feet, sperm whales can escape to the deep ocean where orcas cannot easily follow. Orcas usually surface every three to five minutes to breathe, 
but they can stay submerged for at most 15 minutes. This number is much longer for sperm whales. When they dive deep, on average, they stay underwater for around 45 minutes, but we know that they can hold their breath for up to two hours. So, when their surface-level defenses are breached, sperm whales can retreat to depths beyond the reach of killer whales. There, they can avoid confrontation, regroup, and re-emerge once the threat has passed. So far, all we talked was about sperm whales protecting themselves from orca attacks. But the question is, do they attack orcas? But before going there, let me clarify something. Bull sperm whales are the true titans of the ocean and possess incredible strength. They are so powerful that killer whales try to avoid them. And on the internet, they are called the killers of killer whales. Adult males, especially larger ones, can be aggressive defenders of the pod. They may charge killer whales and use their massive size and strength to intimidate or force the predators to retreat. Though bull sperm whales are formidable, the problem is that they don't live with their pod. So females and calves are still vulnerable to killer whales. But sperm whales have a sophisticated communication system, so it could be helpful if a pod that is under killer whale attack calls bull whales to join and protect their pod. But it is kind of impossible because the social structure and behavior of sperm whales are such that bulls and females with calves typically lead separate lives. After male sperm whales grow, females kick them out of their pods because they want to minimize resource competition. Males are much larger and need way more food, so it is impossible for the pod to feed them and, at the same time, raise the calves. Also, when males reach puberty at around 6 to 12 years of age, they become aggressive and may hurt the pod. So, these youngsters live separately from their pods. Sometimes, they find other lonely males and form small bachelor pods. These newly formed bachelor pods, or solitary males that couldn't find a pod, migrate to deeper and colder waters to hunt large prey like giant squid. The female-led pods remain in these warmer areas to raise young and care for calves. The only time that males may join a pod is during breeding season. So, except the breeding seasons, it is not feasible for bulls to join pods during attacks because they are far away. Going back to our question of do sperm whales offense, I want to quote from the researchers who observed the case of 35 killer whales attacking nine sperm whales. They say that one of the most striking features of the attack was the apparent helplessness of the sperm whales. We never saw them deliberately strike at the killer whales, nor did we see any attempt to escape by diving even during the many times when the killer whales withdrew from the attack. They even say that most tail slappings were not very effective. They had no real force behind them. The few strong tail slaps we did see seemed to be merely reflexive. They did not appear to target individual attackers, and they did not appear to deter them. So, it seems that sperm whales being peaceful means that they are not very well prepared for orca attacks like this. Or at least some pods are not very prepared. But how about bull sperm whales, are there any documents of these killers of killer whales actually killing them? Though sperm whales typically avoid confrontations, there have been exceptions. During the whaling era of the 18th and 19th centuries, sperm whales were heavily hunted for their valuable oil, so there were numerous confrontations with whalers, and there are documented cases of sperm whales attacking and even sinking ships. The most infamous one is the sinking of the whaling ship Essex in 1820. There were 21 men aboard this whaling ship, and in the South Pacific, a massive sperm whale that is estimated to be 85 feet long attacked the ship. The whale struck the Essex twice, first ramming it from the front and then delivering a powerful blow to its side. The attack was so forceful that it breached the hull and the ship sank rapidly. Long story short, only eight crew were rescued after 90 days in the open ocean. Bull sperm whales can also become aggressive when confronted by killer whales. But there are very few studies on how bull sperm whales confront orcas. In one of them that is published in Nature, the researchers tested five bull sperm whales with orca sounds, and in all cases, bulls lowered their vocalization activities to avoid being detected by orcas, dove deep, or joined other bull sperm whales to have protection and stay safe. So researchers conclude that bull sperm whales don't want to confront killer whales. In fact, they don't have any reason to be aggressive toward killer whales except when they are under attack. First of all, they don't have killer whales on their menu and don't prey on them. 
Sperm whales spend most of their time in deep ocean waters, socializing in pods, hunting for squid, and nurturing their young. So they don't compete directly with orcas, and their hunting grounds are not similar. I think it's just the other way around. Killer whales attack and hunt sperm whales when they can, and all that sperm whales have done is adapt to fend off these attacks. They even sleep in a way to be safe against killer whales. Sperm whales have developed a unique sleep pattern where they sleep for short periods of 10 to 15 minutes and often sleep with one eye open. Also, one half of their brain remains active and the other rests, and they sleep this way to remain vigilant against threats like killer whales. Sperm whales are formidable, but they sometimes become killer whales' targets. It is not very frequent, but females and calves are always at risk. Bull sperm whales face less risk, but if they were to face off against a pod of orcas, orcas might attempt to intimidate and harass them. Though, because of their immense size and power, they are formidable opponents. But orcas are highly intelligent and might choose to avoid direct confrontation with a bull sperm whale, especially if it shows signs of aggression. Also, research shows that bull sperm whales try to avoid confronting orcas. The sperm whales were hunted until very recently, and their population declined, but they are reviving and coming back. So we will see more and more encounters between the two species. They also spend most of their life in the deep ocean, so we still have many unanswered questions about them. But with the new technology, we will track them to understand them better. So, we may soon see more evidence to judge how they confront killer whales. This video is about sperm whales ways to deal with orcas. So we mostly talked about sperm whales and didn't talk about why orcas can hunt such large prey like blue whales and sperm whales. If you want to learn more about how killer whales hunt and how they have become the sole apex predator of the oceans, you can watch my video, which talks about their hunting strategies.